Welcome guys to my channel to another photograph that we're gonna discuss today. It's another portrait. This one I did for Rolling Stone magazine, the Brazilian edition. I did this in 2012, November 2012, as we can see here. This guy is, uh, his name is Otto. Otto is a famous musician in Brazil. Musician, singer, songwriter, and so my job was to do a portrait of him, it was a profile of him in the magazine, and they wanted to do in this place. Uh, this place is a bar, and it's very cool. As you can see, it's full of old stuff, and the name of the bar is Chaos, and you can see why. So the whole idea is to have memorabilia of everything from every possible area like soccer, old movies, B movies, toys, old toys, all vintage stuff, I mean, you name it. Now there's a very important technical aspect here that I'd like to discuss and I think this is a good opportunity to do that. I'm using a flash, my usual setup, Octabank, 45 degrees, coming from this direction and uh, only one light source, but I have the natural light here, which in this case it's not natural, it's just the ambient light, which is all the tungsten lights that it's in there, it's in the bar. So the bar is lit by this very, very uh, low wattage tungsten light, you know, filament like lights. And you can see it's all this yellowish. Why is it yellowish? Because in my camera, my camera has a white balance set for 5600 5, Kelvin, which is the same color of my flash. So I set my camera to the color of my flash, which is 5600 Kelvin, which is the color of daylight, okay? Some people also call it like cold light. I, I don't like to say, I like to use the normal Kelvin numbers. So 5600 Kelvin, so what it does, it's if everything is the same white balance, what is white is white, so your skin tone will be rendered as it should be, right? Because white is white, so the color of the light is the same color set on my camera, so everything should have the most natural color possible. That's, that's what white balance is, right? But the other light here, it's not set 5600, it's, uh, it's 3000 Kelvin, or even a little lower, maybe 2800, 2700 Kelvin. That's why it renders like yellow, just like this, uh, this lamp here. So, what's my approach in a situation like this? I, I could do two ways here. I could balance my flash to blend with the rest of the ambience. The way I would do it, I would balance my flash to the rest of the ambience, which I would do it by using a gel called CTO, okay? And it would make my 5600 Kelvin light now becomes a 3200 uh, Kelvin, okay? So I lower the temperature of my light source to get the same temperature of the rest of the room, which is all tungsten. So, okay, now I have everything 3000. I take my camera. I also set my camera to 3000. So now everything is on the same color, okay? But it would not be yellow anymore, it would be white. You would not perceive a temperature. It would be just, uh, you know, whatever, the skin tone would be skin tone, but you would not get this yellowish, as you can see in the corners of this page, right? This lampshade, for example, would not be yellow, would just be white, because now everything is white balanced, okay? White is white. I like to, to, to let the, to have these two different colors. I like that. For example, my flashlight, my flashlight is hitting him at 5600. So I have his skin rendered 
naturally, the way you should, okay? It's not yellowish, it's not coldish or bluish, it's just as it should. But I'm using at the least amount of power intensity that I can in, that, in, my, in my flash head, which is, if I'm not mistaken, around 2 watts, right? My, I use the Pulse Buff, that's the brand of my flashlight, and the maximum power is 650 watts per second. In this case, I'm using at the lowest, which is only 2 watts per second. So we can see the light is hitting him here and is hitting a little bit of the background, but not everything. It's not spreading all over. It's just hitting in this very, very small area here. So where the light hits in the wall, it's, you can see that it's white. You can see this, this thing here is white. But where it doesn't hit, it's still the ambience light. So my light is not strong enough to wash the whole thing, just a little bit. And now the other part that you have to, when you do something like this, take a look at my, my technical background here. I'm, on, I'm still with the 5D Mark II, uh, ISO 800, aperture, aperture 6.3, shutter, 20 or 20 of, of a second, okay? And I'm using the 24 millimeter lens, which is the 24 1.4 L series. So, okay, I have my, I had done a few shots before, as you can see here, you know, we were exploring the place, exploring the location, pretty cool location, but I'm still not happy. And then I get to this position. And he's having a cigarette, he's having a beer, I like that. It has a lot to do with his personality. And it's funny because the place is called Chaos and it has this, this tattoo called Harmony. So it already brings some sort of a, you know, a juxtaposition of different elements. And then I have, I'm in between two shots here. I'm the first one, this one, and somehow I like this one because, you know, he does a little thing, just a little thing with his arm here. See the elbow with the arm resting on his waist? But I like the expression. I really like this. I really like the way he's, he's just, you know, facing the camera like, hey, what's up? I like that. But then what's my light doing? Okay. My one light source doing its thing, and I want as much as ambient light to hit my sensor as possible. The way I do it, the one thing I can control that in my camera, it's not the aperture. It is the ISO, but it will also affect my light source if I, if I start messing with the ISO. The one thing that will impact of in that will make my camera to absorb ambience light together with the, my, my flash and make the, the two things blend is my shutter. The shutter will control ambience. Aperture will control more of my, my flashlight. Shutter will control the ambience. So the longer my shutter is open, more ambient light will hit the sensor. You just need to remember this and you have to practice. So if you have a flash, take your flash, put it on manual, okay? This has to be done manually. Do not, do not use TTL, ETTL, none of that. You gotta learn to control your flash manually, all right? You can use it, maybe, I don't know, start in the mid-intensity mid position then go all the way to the lowest position and then set your, your aperture. Don't, don't, don't change the aperture, but st just start moving your, your shutter. Exactly what's going on here. See, I'm going to repeat this. You, you, you got to understand this. It's very simple, but it's a little confusing at first when you try. But it's so we have two different color temperature doing heating the sensor here. I have a 5600 Kelvin 
temperature light hitting the sensor here, which is my flash, and I have a 32, 33,000 Kelvin temperature heating my sensor as well. And you can see clearly, here is a little yellowish, you see? all around as if it was like a, a glow of yellowish light and all the area where my flash hits it's just more natural it's like white light okay so why why the shutter has a big deal here why it plays such a big part because essentially the shutter what is doing is it's it's lower than the speed of my flashlight my flashlight, the Paul Seabuff Einstein, 650 watt per second, okay? If I use it on the lowest intensity, the speed of the flash, it's very fast. It's like 1 slash 13,000. So it's 1 slash 13,000 of a second, okay? On the other hand, my shutter here, it's 20th of a second. So, my flash is going, it's just popping much, much faster than this guy. My camera gathers in that once of 20 second time, my shutter opens and is gathering all that ambient light, but then in the middle of it, my flash pops and my sensor also captures that just enough. But then the, the two things, the two light are kept at the same, you know, together. This is the blend and this is what you see here. And if done balanced, if done properly, it's, it's beautiful because it's just, it's just very subtle. So you have him here. If it's not balanced enough, you know, and it's very a, a delicate balance, two things could happen here. Either I would have him properly lit, but everything else would be dark because the ambient light would, would not be enough to hit the sensor or my flash would be too weak to lit him, to hit him. So he would be completely yellow, just like the, the rest of the picture. So in, not, in order to everything be lit, balanced, it, you have to properly lead enough for him and enough for the ambience. And the way you do it, you test it. You test it. Again, you have to do this manually, right? You need to learn to master the camera and to master the flash. Now, if you go too slow here on your shutter, you're gonna have a problem. That is, the person lead by the flash will be okay, but everything else will be shaken. So you see, it's a very thin line you have to walk here to balance everything in the right amount of light that your ambience is not shaking, it's everything in there, sharp. You have enough of a slow shutter speed to absorb the ambience light you have in this case. And your flash, it's not too strong nor too weak, it's just perfectly in balance with everything else, okay? Then you have a picture like this, which I really, really like it. Of course, he's doing, I love this picture a lot because of the way he is, his attitude, his, his, the way he's posing. But I think that the, the blend of different lights here makes a part, just makes the whole thing pop because we see that it's just around him, his yellowish, beautiful light. And even, and now this is, this is something cool. And I'm gonna, re I think I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna repeat it a lot of times. I like a lot more the shadows in the portrait than the lead part. I think the shadows of a portrait tells much more of a tells a much more story, a much more interesting story of that portrait than the, the lead areas. And we see here all the shadows. They are they have they have a color. They are kind of orange. Look at here in his arm. Look at here. This is the shadow here. You know what what, what light is hitting this shadow area? It's the yellowish light so the light the shadow gets this orange 
very very subtle orange tint to it this is because of the ambience light okay guys this is a very advanced uh, content so please if you have questions this is the time I'm gonna talk a lot more because I do this all the time I love blending different lights to my portrait and we're gonna definitely talk we're gonna talk about using colors to do this different colors not only temperature but like say a, a, a blue gel a pink gel a red gel and and how to blend them okay so if you have a specific questions please bring them on and thank you again for watching this i see you next time